Hello, I am Ahmad, and in this video, I'm going to solve one example regarding the uh, perturbation or imperfection applied to a, a rigid bar, which we solved earlier in the other video. Let's go for that. Okay, uh, let's start with introduction to the example. Okay, let's assume we have uh, two bars connected to a hinge. At one end, we have point A with a hinge support. At, at point B, we have a roller. And at point C, we have a, a spring with the stiffness of K under a compressive load applied to point B we assume A to C is with the length of L and C to B is with the length of 2L so in this example I'm going to calculate the buckling load and also the stability of this uh, system if it is under a kind of perturbation or imperfection. We assume that we have epsilon times P force at point C. It represents if the system is uh, initially under a kind of inclination. So I can solve this problem with two methods. First, I apply the load epsilon P at point C, and then later on, I will solve this with the initial rotation. So let's write down the Solution. So if we apply the force, then we would expect that we have theta at point A and theta over 2 at point B, and this spring deformation is delta. So delta horizontal at point B will be L minus L cosinus theta plus 2L minus 2L cosinus theta over 2. And now I can write down the loss of energy due to applied load. So it will be minus P times delta horizontal at B. It will be minus PL 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2, 1 minus cosinus theta over 2. Also, now we can see that due to epsilon p applied at point c we have also work done at point c so the deformation is delta and the applied load is epsilon times p again as far as the load can increase consequently the uh, energy or the deformation will decrease as a result it will be minus epsilon p times delta also we know that delta can be written as a function of l and theta so sinus theta is delta over l as a result delta is l sinus theta so we will be minus pl 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 1 minus cosinus theta over 2 minus epsilon p times l sinus theta also we have this uh, spring so i can calculate what is the stored energy inside the spring it is 1 over 2 k delta 2 and i can substitute delta with l sinus theta so it will be KL2 over 2 sinus 2 theta. And then I can calculate the total potential energy, which is a function of theta. It will be W plus V, and it will be KL2 sinus theta square minus PL, 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2, 1 minus cosinus theta over 2, minus epsilon p l sinus theta 
as we stated in other examples so first we can assume sinus theta is almost theta when theta tends to be zero and one minus cosinus theta will be one over two theta power by two so if i substitute these in the pi function it will be kl2 over 2 theta 2 minus pl 1 over 2 theta 2 plus 2 times 1 over 2 theta over 2 power by 2 minus epsilon pl pi theta will be kl2 over 2 theta 2 minus pl so it will be 3 over 4 3 over 4 e l theta square minus epsilon p l theta. To find out the critical load, I can take the first derivative of pi by respect of theta. So it will be k l 2 theta minus 3 over 2 p l theta minus epsilon p l. So in this case, you can see that the calculation cannot be done with only theta. As a result, I can calculate P as a force. So if I write PL times 3 over 2 theta plus epsilon equals to KL2 theta, then P will be KL divided by 3 over 2 theta plus epsilon times so this is not very convenient factor to be considered as p critical zero. I can assume that epsilon is zero, means that it's perfectly straight and there is no uh, imperfection in the system. So then p will be two thirds of k l. So we calculated this earlier and I call this p zero just to make the rest of calculation with the dimensionless variable now i can come back to equation pi kl2 over 2 sinus power by 2 theta minus pl 1 minus cosinus theta plus 2 1 minus cosinus theta over 2 minus epsilon pl minus theta Now we can make the first derivative from pi by respect of theta will be k l2 sinus theta cosinus theta minus p l sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2 minus epsilon p l cosinus theta. As you can see, if I make this equation to be zero, there is no uh, primary path for this example because we have cosinus theta here and the rest are with the function of sinus theta. As a result, I cannot simplify and find out primary. As a result, we have only uh, one pathway. So from here, P will be let's write it down this way sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2 plus epsilon cosinus theta will be as same as kl2 sinus theta cosinus theta and then p will be kl sinus theta cosinus theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2 plus epsilon cosinus theta. I can divide either side of this uh, equation with kl two third of kl representing p0 as a result then it will be p divided by p0 I can call it lambda and it will be 3 over 2 sinus theta cosinus theta divided by 
sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2 plus epsilon cosinus theta. The next step is to determine where the system is stable. For this reason, we need to make the second derivative of this uh, total potential energy equation. Round 2 pi by respect of theta will be KL2 cosinus theta cosinus theta minus sinus theta sinus theta minus PL cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 plus epsilon PL sinus theta. And we want to check where it's greater than 0. So here, if I simplify it, cosinus theta over 2 minus epsilon sinus theta should be less than KL2 cosinus 2 theta. And then I divide by 2 thirds of KL. So this is representing lambda. Lambda should be less than 3 over 2 cosinus 2 theta divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 minus epsilon sinus theta. Now we can sketch lambda and also this is the uh, situation where the system will be stable. So lambda as a function of epsilon and theta will be 3 divided by 2 times sinus theta times cosinus theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by 2 plus epsilon times cosinus theta. And for checking the stability, lambda s as a function of theta, it's also a function of epsilon. Not be forgotten, 3 divided by 2 times cosinus 2 theta divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 times cosinus theta divided by 2 minus epsilon times sinus theta. Putting them somewhere, and theta is from zero to pi divided by two. Now I can sketch or plot the function lambda. And for the first, I assume that uh, epsilon is zero. So here is what we had also in the other example without any imperfection. And we had also the system 
to be completely unstable for the entire path. Now I'm going to apply this uh, epsilon. For example, it, it can be 1% of the load. So for this, it's better if I change the tracing color because I'm going to use different uh, epsilons. So here I go with 1%. Here we can see how it looks like. Let's go with the... So here, this is for very tiny uh, load applied to point C. Let's go with a little bit more, for example, with 0.5%. So here we can see that the stability pathway is not changing that much but we can see that with a lower load when you are increasing the uh, lateral load the system will uh, not resist without uh, uh, compared to when there is no uh, lateral load so for example i can go with 10 percent for example just to compare And for this one, I go with the color green. Okay, here it is. You can see that with it increasing the imperfection or the transversal load, the system would uh, fail with less load and the critical load is decreased. Now we can calculate what is the uh, bifurcation point for, for example, if we have uh, epsilon equals to 0 0.05. So I assume epsilon is 0 0.05 and we are going to determine bifurcation point. So we are looking for this point and then also the relevant critical load. So three over two sinus theta cosinus theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by two plus 0 0.05 cosinus theta will be as same as 3 over 2 cosinus 2 theta divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 minus 0 0.05 sinus theta. So we can see that the guess value is something around 0 0.3. For example, theta guess 0 0.3 radian. We can use MATCAD to solve this equation. I can just simplify these two together. And then you can use the solve block. And here you can even write the equation. So it is much easier. I assume epsilon 
equals to 0 0.05 and also theta guess equals to 0 0.3 then I can write the constraint I want to find the solution where these two graphs or these two functions meet each other so or intersect each other uh, I can write down this equation equals to the other one one thing that you need to consider okay lambda s epsilon and theta but here we are going to use guess values so you need to write down guess so if you want to solve with one equation then then uh, uh, this can be because we are just solving one equation and instead you can choose epsilon directly here it's not a guess value it's a constant and here out of the solver block you can write down epsilon equals to 0 0.05 and in the solver, you can just write find theta guess. So here we can see that the answer is 0 0.303. And for this answer, I can calculate lambda relevant Parking load. So it's 8.59 or 0 0.859. Let's try one more time. For example, if we go with 0 0.1, it's uh, 0 0.376. And also for example, 0 0.01, 0 0.95 percent or 0 0.95. I can bring these to our notes and here we can just check and understand it better for the first one here we can see that uh, the value is 0 0.948 and then for the second one the value is for the bifurcation point is 0 0.859 and the last one is 0 0.792 what does that mean it means that if we have epsilon equals to five percent of the load applied at point c then lambda critical will be 0 0.859 lambda critical was p over p critical zero which was two-thirds of kl as a result p critical in this case will be 0 0.859 times two-thirds of kl so this is based on solution when you apply a tiny load uh, in the uh, system now i'm going to solve this with the initial inclination of the member the same principle and we will see the result how it looks like 
Now let's continue with the same question, but this time instead of having a, a tiny force, I rotate the element for a tiny initial angle. So if the system was supposed to be perfectly installed, point A, point B, point C, but due to imperfection, I assume that the system is installed from somewhere here, and then we have a kind of uh, initial deformation. Let's say this is theta zero, uh, the other side will be theta zero over two, and here we have initial delta or delta zero. Again, the length of the element is the same as what we had L and 2L. And now I sketch the deformation due to the force E applied after installation of the member. Theta and the other side, theta over 2. Now we have to calculate uh, the horizontal deformation at point B. It will be, so I sketch it with detail. So here it was L. And then it's a rigid bar rotated with the angle of theta zero. So now this length is L cosinus theta zero. And after applying the load, the element comes here with the same length, which is theta. And now this is L cosinus theta. As a result, the horizontal displacement after applying force P is here, which is L cosinus theta zero minus L cosinus theta. So L cosinus theta zero minus L cosinus theta plus 2L cosinus theta 0 over 2 minus 2L cosinus theta over 2. And I can factor L cosinus theta 0 minus cosinus theta plus 2 cosinus theta 0 over 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. Now I can write V minus P times delta horizontal B will be minus PL cosinus theta zero minus cosinus theta plus two cosinus theta zero over two minus two cosinus theta over two. About the deformation of the S spring. So it is right now, it is L sinus theta. And initially it was L sinus theta zero. As a result, the formation of the spring after applying the load will be L sinus theta minus L sinus theta zero. Now W will be 1 over 2 A L sinus theta minus L sinus theta 0 over by 2 
which will be kl2 over 2 sinus theta minus sinus theta 0 power by 2. Now we can write total potential energy as a function of theta is w plus v will be kl2 over 2 sinus theta minus sinus theta 0 power by 2 minus pl cosinus theta 0 minus cosinus theta plus 2 cosinus theta 0 divided by 2 minus 2 cosinus theta over 2. And now I can make the first derivative of total potential energy function by respect of theta will be kl2 times sinus theta minus sinus theta 0 times cosinus theta minus pl sinus theta plus sinus theta over 2. From here, I can calculate P will be KL sinus theta cosinus theta minus sinus theta 0 cosinus theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by 2. And we can recall P0 was 2 thirds of KL. Then lambda will be 3 over 2 times sinus theta cosinus theta minus sinus theta 0 cosinus theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by 2. To check the system to be stable, we have to calculate the second derivative of total potential energy. So it will be KL2 cosinus theta times cosinus theta minus sinus theta minus sinus theta 0 times sinus theta minus pl cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 and we want to check where it is stable so from here i can calculate p should be less than so here it will be cosinus 2 theta minus sinus theta s square plus sinus theta sinus theta 0 and this is cosinus 2 theta. So it will be cosinus 2 theta or let's write it here P L should be less than KL2 times cosinus 2 theta plus sinus theta sinus theta 0 divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2 and if I divide this by 2 third of KL2 so this will be lambda And the other side will be 3 over 2. So lambda should be less than 3 over 2. Cosinus 2 theta plus sinus theta sinus theta 0 divided by cosinus theta plus 1 over 2 cosinus theta over 2. So we can sketch these two in the MATCAD and find out how it looks like. Unlike the previous solution you can see that here we do not have epsilon but instead we have theta zero or uh, initial imperfection of the system so lambda will be a function of theta zero and theta and it's three divided by two times cosinus two theta plus sinus theta times sinus theta 0 divided by cosinus theta 
plus 1 over 2 times cosinus theta divided by 2. And also So this is lambda s, it should be less than that. And here lambda as a function of theta zero and theta three divided by two times sinus theta times cosinus theta minus sinus theta zero times cosinus theta divided by sinus theta plus sinus theta divided by 2. Uh, I prefer to bring this to here. And we can check, okay, now I assume that we have 0 0.01. For the initial uh, rotation 0 0.005 and then 0 0.01 so here is how it looks like or you can check the other values for the initial imperfection we can calculate also the same principle to calculate the critical load this time I have to write it down with uh, theta 0 you can continue with that because it's a function but I prefer to use the same variable So with the value of, uh, for example, 0, 0, 001, then it will be 0 0.098. And then with the 0 0.005, it will be 0 0.167. And then if we go with 0.01 so theta will be 0.212 so here is how it looks like but if if you increase the value for example to let's go with some here factors So here we can see that the starting point is not zero. Uh, I can bring it back to the initial calculation and I have to this for you. And we can also zoom in. This is very, let's say, famous picture, I think. You, you have seen this before in other documents. Yes, here we can see theta zero is starting point in the bottom. And for example, to of these also 
it would be nice to compare the results. Here we can see this is 985. The next one is 955. And the last one is 929. So it means that if theta 0 is 0 0.01 radian, then Lambda critical will be 0 0.929 and P0 was two thirds of KL. So as a result, P critical with this initial uh, imperfection will be two thirds of 0 0.929 KL. So 0 0.62. This is the end of this example and we went through the uh, imperfection applied to a one single uh, degree of freedom system and we calculated uh, with two methods, once with the perturbation load or imperfection load applied to point C and then we solved the same example with the more physical or let's say with more conceptual we also calculated the same system with initial rotation theta zero and we calculated also uh, critical load uh, or or let's say the uh, bifurcation point or buckling point that would happen with uh, with the initial value of the uh, imperfection. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.